Okay, so in this first question, we have been asked to calculate the resultant force. And we've been given this diagram here, which shows us that the upwards force has a magnitude of 20 newtons. The horizontal force has a magnitude of 30 newtons and there's a right angle between them. Now, our first step is to decide upon the scale that we're going to use. So for me, I'm going to use a scale of one centimetre equals 10 newtons. And then I'm going to redraw out this diagram to scale. So firstly, I need my 20 newton force that's going horizontally. So that's now going to become two centimetres. And then I need my horizontal force of 30 newtons, which is going to be three centimetres. And I'm just going to use, because I have one in my geometry set, a set square, just to check that that definitely is a right angle between them. So I've redrawn out that diagram now to scale. So the next thing I need to do is I need to get my compass out and I need to set it to one of these forces. So I'm going to set my first one to three centimetres, which is the size of the 30 newton force. And then I'm going to go on the opposite force, the 20 newtons. And I'm just going to draw a nice arc coming off of that. Then I'm going to do the same for the opposite one, so I'm now going to set it to 20 newtons. And I'm going to draw a nice arc off the end of the opposite force, the 30 newton one. And you can see that there's one point where those arcs cross, and that's our important point. So now I need to draw a nice arrow from the corner to that point where the arcs cross. And that is my resultant force. So if I measure the length of that, I can then use my scale again to find out the magnitude of that resultant force. So I've got a length of 3.7 centimeters and if I times that by 10 that becomes 37 newtons. Now you'll see that the second part of that question will then potentially ask you to measure the angle between the resultant force and the horizontal axis. So for that I just need to get myself a protractor, put it along the horizontal axis and then see that my resultant force is coming off at an angle of around 35 degrees. Okay, so this example is a little bit trickier because there's no longer a 90 degree angle between my two forces. However, we're going to use exactly the same steps as we've just used in the first example. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide upon my scale. And this time, I'm going to use a scale of one centimetre equaling 100 newtons. So for my first force, I'm going to draw it out. So it's got a magnitude of 400 newtons. So I'm going to draw that out for centimetres in length following my scale. Then I need to get my protractor out because I actually need to measure this angle because it's no longer 90 degrees. So I need an angle of 50 degrees which is going to be there. So my second angle is going to fall along that dotted line. 
and it's got a magnitude of 250 newtons. So it's going to be 2.5 centimetres in length. So drawing that second angle. Now, same as I did in the first one, I need to get my compass. I need to extend it out to my first length, which is 2.5 centimetres. And then draw my arc off that opposite force. And then I extend that all the way out to 4 centimetres. Extend that off of the opposite force. And I'll see that there's a nice point where those arcs cross. And that is where our resultant force is going to finish up. So it's going to start in this corner. And it's going to finish up nicely at the point where those two arcs cross. And if I measure that length, that is three centimetres. So the magnitude of my resultant force is 300 newton. And the second part of my question is to find the angle between the resultant force and the horizontal. So again, I just get my protractor out. And I can see that that has got an angle of 36 degrees. Okay, so just to recap the key steps in working out the resultant force and the angle using a vector diagram. First step is to decide upon a scale and try and use a nice easy one, so like a factor of 10 or 5 or 2. Your second step is to draw the first force to scale using your ruler. Then measure the angle between your first and your second force. That might be nice and easy and be 90 degrees, or you might have to measure it using your protractor. Step number four is to then draw your second force, again to scale using your ruler at that angle that you've just measured. Fifth step, draw your arcs using your compass and making sure that you're setting them to the size of the opposite force. Step six is to draw your resultant force. Make sure you do that using your ruler from the corner between your two forces to the point where those two arcs meet. Seventh step is to then calculate the size of that resultant force using your scale and your ruler. And then your last step is to measure the angle between the resultant force and either your horizontal or your vertical, and you just use that using a protractor.